This is Dabu7. Now, a disclaimer right out the gate. We all know how NASA is full of so many lies and BS that you really have to use discernment when looking at everything that is put out. Now, with that said, you can't just shut down and turn a cheek and ignore what they're doing. That would be rather stupid as well. So you need to look at what they're doing, what they're saying in the bigger picture and take things with a grain of salt and use discernment like I said. And with that in mind, we have NASA announcing that they have this big announcement they're going to make tomorrow at 1 p.m. in regards to a massive find that they have discovered outside of our solar system. Now we've seen these big promises of a big find uh, before. And they delivered and talking about water on Mars and, and things of that nature. But it's never been that big kicker that everyone's been waiting for. You have found life, no matter how minute. The moment they come out and they say that they've discovered an organic material that ha has life in it. No matter if it's the smallest molecule, whatever it is. I have a feeling they're about to make this statement. They're saying thus far that they have found evidence of an organic material on the dwarf planet of Ceres. Now, I've talked about Ceres before. They've now labeled Ceres a dwarf planet for crying out loud. This was supposed to be this massive asteroid that they were going in to land on and all this other stuff. And this, this belt sits between Mars and Jupiter, for those that don't know. So NASA is now saying... Tomorrow, they're having this conference that they have discovered something beyond our solar system. Now, I don't know if they're going to come out there with the panel of scientists and they're going to give their old, their same old crap where they beat around the bush, they talk a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, and hours go by, and just a couple small details that may be important uh, do get leaked out. They do drop a, a few things, but will it be the big thing? Will it be the big We've discovered life, or we have discovered an exoplanet, or we now know what is out there making its way in. Let's not forget all the legend and talk of Nibiru, Planet X, whatever you want to call it. There's a reason why people have gravitated toward that, because there's been evidence and proof throughout history, even inside the pyramids, inscribed on the walls. There is another planet that... Where did it go has been the question. If it's out there, they've been saying for the longest time, something's out there perturbing the planets, but we don't know what it is. And here recently, they have been hinting throughout the past several months that they have discovered a new planet making its way in that could have been potentially part of another solar system that got caught by the gravitational pull of ours. This is very interesting because a lot can come of this, whether it's a dwarf star, whether it's a planet, an exoplanet, like they're stating, if it's harboring life, has water on it, ice, I mean, things of that nature. If it's moving in toward a more heated atmosphere and it has ice, will it melt off to water? There's all types of different things. And with a body that far out moving in, where did it come from? All these questions being asked. Was it always a part of the system and they knew it? Right? You know, they lie so much. Why don't we take our big bad telescopes ever and point them at the moon? Because they won't let you. That's right. Anytime you go to one of these university telescopes, you know, like they got the one they call Lucifer. Are you kidding me? They, they will not allow students to look at the moon on a normal basis because if that was the case, we would have killer footage. You would be seeing things left and right. And I can't help but think this is going to be one of the things down the road that I make a move toward. Since no one else wants to do it, since they won't allow us to do it the way that we need it, I think what, what is needed is a badass telescope. One that can get up on the moon live in HD and show us what's really going on. And it probably costs some money. And it probably probably takes some time. But nothing comes easy out here. And if we want the truth, we've got to keep on grinding. 
I know Dark Sky's got an observatory and stuff set up out there in Arizona and Kingman. He zooms into the moon and other things out there. But even after looking at what he has, we need something stronger, bigger, badder. They can get up right into the cracks where we can see the definition of the towers coming up off the surface and anything else. That way it's not pixelated and we're wondering and this and that. That way when we see something going by the screen, we can see the definition in it. And then we don't have to wonder anymore. We can start to say, all right, these are the objects we're getting and start classifying those objects uh, as to, in, to what we're seeing, documenting it. As far as an incoming object, well, even a fireball, asteroid, whatever it is, I honestly don't think they're going to be saying anything till it's like right on our doorstep or to where other people are going to be detecting it and they can no longer hide it. And that may be what's happening here, but could be wrong. It could be something else. It could be totally stupid coming from NASA, or it could be huge. I'm just going to have to wait and see. 1 o'clock tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming on Dabu 777 live. I'm going to try to cover that and the conference over there live while it's happening. I'm going to be covering a lot of things live over there, so make sure you're subscribed to that channel, Dabu 777. I have a new feed up here shortly over there for the rest of the day. And until next time, this has been Dabu 7. Much love, guys. And eyes to the skies.